Hi, this is in this is for our fairy tale unit for third grade, and I'm going to read Cinderella by James Marshalls, and I thank the publisher very much for allowing us to read this on YouTube. Let's see, the publisher is Puffin Books. Thank you. This is during the coronavirus time, so okay. So let's listen. Once upon a once there was a widower with a kind and beautiful daughter. Life was sweet in that in their simple cottage until the widower decided to remarry. Okay, widower means his wife had died. Okay. Not knowing the ways of the world, he married a vain and horrid woman whose two daughters were as vain and horrid as he, as she. What a stupid little house, they said. Now vain means oh I'm so beautiful. Oh, oh, I just love me. Horrid just means horrible, okay? The widower's daughter was made to work like a servant in her own house. She was soon run ragged, washing, ironing, scrubbing, dusting, and cooking heaps of food. Okay, run ragged just means run so much she's just constantly working that she was just tired. The poor girl no longer had a bed of her own and had to sleep among the ashes and cinders. Remember what ash means? It's that black stuff from a fire, okay? And and from that time on, they called her Cinderella. So, okay. Now, it happened that the king of the land had a handsome son. The king's greatest desire was to see his son married. He decided to give a ball and invite all the fair maidens of the realm. Okay, we don't know if he's handsome or not, do we? We can't see him. When the king's merchant messenger delivered the royal invitation, the dreadful stepsisters were overjoyed. Each was convinced that she would win the prince's favor. In other words, get to marry him. On the day of the ball, Cinderella was exhausted from, typing, uh, from trying to make her stepsisters look beautiful. Wouldn't you like to go to the ball? They said, teasing her cruelly. Not nice. Oh, yes, said Cinderella. Don't be ridiculous, cried the stepsisters. What would a wretched mouse like you do at a fancy ball? And they shrieked with laughter. <laughs> Not nice, huh? Not nice. Thinking themselves beautiful beyond words, the stepsisters left for the ball. Don't be a lazy bones while we're away, they said to Cinderella. And think about all the fun we'll be having. Oh, after her stepsisters had gone, Cinderella went about her chores. As she worked, she wept bitterly. You look so miserable, child, said a kind voice. Where? Where's the... Oh, there, in the, there she is. Who are you, said Cinderella. I, replied the plump little woman, plump means a little fat, am your fairy godmother. Please tell me why you're crying. I want so much to go to the ball, said Cinderella. That should not be difficult. Too difficult to arrange, said the fairy godmother, but you must do as I say. First, fetch me a nice big pumpkin from the garden. Cinderella brought the biggest pumpkin. Wow, that is a big one she could find. Now, said the fairy godmother, I will require six white mice and a fine fat rat. Ooh. Cinderella brought them live from the trap. She looked happy. Oh, that's, a, that's not, there's the rat and there's the six mice. What are these? I'm going to read about it. And finally, said the fairy godmother, I must have two lizards. You might look behind the watering pail. Cinderella did as she was told. She doesn't look happy to be touching those lizards, does she? I don't mind touching a lizard. I don't want to touch the rat. Mm. Do you remember what the, the what they're for? I just showed you the picture. Did you see it? What are they for? Do you remember? Okay, let's look. With the touch of her wand, the fairy godmother changed the pumpkin into a magnificent golden coach, like a wagon, okay? And the mice into six white horses. These horses are pulled the wagon for the coach. The rat into a jolly coachman. He's the one that drives the horses. And the lizards into two sleek footmen. 
footmen are there to help the 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 people out of the lug out of the ca carriage and also to carry anything. So footmen. Lovely," said the fairy godmother. Exclaimed, "Off you go." Am I to go in rags? Said Cinderella. <laughs> Silly me," said the fairy godmother, and she transformed Cinderella's filthy rags into an elegant gown, and on her feet placed a pair of sparkling glass slippers. Elegant means fancy, okay? Now you are ready, said the fairy godmother, but remember this, you must return home before the stroke of midnight, for then all your finery will change back to what it was. Cinderella promised to obey, and then she was off to the ball. At the palace, the prince learned that an enchanting maiden had arrived, and he greeted her himself. There he is. Is he handsome? Yeah, I guess so. The other guests were puzzled. Who was this beautiful stranger? Who was it? Completely smitten. The prince had eyes only for Cinderella. Smitten means he's completely in love. Okay, he just thinks she's amazing. They danced every dance. Cinderella found herself deeply in love. She was so happy that she took no notice of the hour. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Suddenly, the clock began to strike 12. That's the magic hour, right? Remembering the warning, Cinderella ran from the prince's arms, out of the ballroom, and down the steps of the palace. In her haste, she lost one of the glass slippers. Wait, wait, cried the prince. I don't know your name. Cinderella's golden coach sped away from the palace, but at the stroke of 12, the fairy godmother's warning came true. The coach was turned back, changed back into a pumpkin, the horses back into mice, the coachman back into a rat, and the footman back into lizards. Cinderella was once again dressed in rags. Discovering the tiny glass slipper, the prince vowed to find and marry the beautiful stranger. He traveled the kingdom far and wide, trying the slipper on every maiden's foot, but it fit no one. Finally, he arrived at Cinderella's house. Me first, cried the elder stepsister, extending her long, skinny foot. But she could only manage to get just her toes into the slipper. My turn, cried the younger stepsister, thrusting her pudgy foot, pudgy means fat, foot at the prince. She pushed it, shoved, grunted, and groaned, but the slipper would not fit. May I try it on? said Cinderella, stepping out of the shadows. The glass slipper fit perfectly on Cinderella's tiny foot. I have found my princess, cried the prince. We shall wed tomorrow. On that festive day, the kingdom rejoiced. Festive means full of activity and celebration. Generous and forgiving, Cinderella moved her family into the palace and found a lord of the court for each of her stepsisters to marry. I wouldn't want to marry them, would you? I feel sorry for their lords. <laughs> Cinderella's fairy godmother moved in too, just to make sure everyone lived happily ever after. Now we're going to talk about the elements of the fairy tale uh, in class, okay? But, um, and we're going to see, you. so you remember this story and think about that, and so, and remember, maybe even listen again but this is our first fairy tale Cinderella by James Marshall see you bye